Welcome, everybody, to Who's Your Band? I am Jeffrey Paul. I am joined by Sean Morton. How are you, Sean? I'm good, buddy. A little somber day today. It is a somber day. I'm going to bring in our guest right away. Um, he is an actor. He is a comedian. Uh, he's all around swell guy. Give it up for our uh, guest, Sean Lynch. How are you, Sean? How you doing? Good to be uh, here. <laughs> well, well, we're glad to have you. And um, we're just a little down today. Uh, you know, a c- couple of passings. We had the uh, passing of uh, Toby Keith. Were you guys Toby Keith fans? Uh, huge, actually. My mom was a gigantic Toby Keith fan uh, for a long, long time. I, I posted on uh, on social media before. Um, I've been to maybe a thousand concerts in my life, and there has never been a rowdier crowd in my entire life than a Toby Keith concert. Probably seen we, him like five or six times, I would say. Wow. We, we, we just see him. Uh, PNC. Um I think PNC a couple times and then um probably one arena show, but he's uh he was a hit machine, you know, and he got a little political um in the two thousands, whatever. Um, but no, he was uh he had like forty three top ten hits. Yeah, With- for me, I, I I was I was a fan, not a huge fan. Um I liked um I think my favorite song was off the out al- first album was uh uh, wish I didn't know now. Great song. Yeah, uh, a lyric that's actually taken from a Bob Seger song. Um, off of uh, what was the song? Uh, Against the Wind. Uh, oh, but yeah, uh, I like that. I like should have been a cowboy. I thought the first album was great, and then in right after nine eleven, he writes that courtesy of the red, white, and blue, and that's where he kind of gets into a little bit of controversy. Sean Lynch, are you familiar with uh, Toby Keith at all? Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing enough uh, concerts in Atlanta. <laughs> he gets <laughs> yeah, pretty familiar with uh, his stuff. I mean, good stuff, fun concerts. You know, was never uh, I was never that invested, but uh, yeah, decent stuff. Yeah, I I he, I know he kind of got into it with the Dixie Chicks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was kind of like a, a funny thing, and like, yeah, listen. I'll side with Toby Keith over the Dixie Chicks every day. I like, I don't mind the Dixie Chicks music, believe it or not. I think it's not bad, but I mean, you know, come on, that just fucking poses. Well, you know, one of the big things that people don't realize too is he's the one who signed Taylor Swift. What Toby. do you mean he signed her? He's her first contract. He signed her to her very first record deal to his label in 2005. I had no idea about that. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, he was a very big dude. I mean, very, very big. Um, in the late '90s, 2000s, he was by far the biggest country act that was out there. There was no yeah, he, to touch. Him. Was, yeah, it was kind of him and uh, Travis Tritt, you know, around this yeah. time. Travis, Travis was in the '90s, but th- yeah, and I'm honestly, I think it went from Garth Brooks to Toby Keith was the biggest one after Garth Brooks. Right, right, and then you started to get to more of the uh, the pop uh, country. That started well, it all changed. It all yeah, changed. Your, your Keith Urban's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, so it was sad to stay, to hear about the passing of uh, Toby Keith. You and know, the one thing that he did, though, I don't know if you're aware of this. He, he wrote, signed uh, Taylor Swift, I think. No, he actually, um, he knew he, he knew he was dick. He knew he was dying. <laughs> you know, he knew he was dying. He's had stomach cancer for like two or three right. years. That's right. Um, he booked two shows as a farewell to performing in Vegas. I think it was in, in, de- December. in, de- in December. December. And he did the People's Choice Awards where he debuted his last song, which was uh, Don't Let the Old Man In or something. I forgot the name of it. Uh, you, you, you're telling me this. And as I'm hearing you say it, my heart is hurting. Because because it reminds me of fucking Warren Zevon had, uh, yeah. had to sing that song when he was dying on what, Letterman. What, Where Else in London? No. No. <laughs> no. He, has, he has another song? Yeah. yeah. What's that? You, that, that it's it's so in the, think of me once in a while. Think of me once in a while. Oh my, let me tell you Keep something. Keep me in your heart for a while. Keep me in your heart. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Oh, that's you, a sad song. You know, you know the story behind it, and then you hear that song. If if that song doesn't make you choke up, you don't have a oh, song. Oh yeah, yeah. That is one of those. Oh my god, that is. I I can't take it. That's that's yeah. like. <laughs> did you ever see Boys in the Hood? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When Ricky gets shot. Oh, yeah. I can't, I can't fucking take that scene. That's what it reminds me. Like I, I, I'll, I'll stop it. I, I just got to, I get out of the room. 
<laughs> it bothers me too. It, it bothers me too much. Uh, yeah, that the Johnny Cash hurt video. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. These are all just like just tear jerkers. Oh, uh, yeah, God. yeah. I turned into a, I, I turned into <laughs> a mega a Johnny person. Cash movie. Good God, <laughs> I, I think I had it rough. Well, he was in the original True Grit. Yeah, but that, yeah, he was. No, no, we know. I'm sorry. He was in the Cowboys. The Cowboys. Oh, John. Okay. Right, with uh, John Wayne. Same character. Right, it's still Rooster Cogburn. Sure. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. So, hmm. yeah, they're, they're all the same. John Wayne was the ultimate out of shape in shape actor. Yeah. Yeah, that barrel chest. Yeah, the thing barrel Charles chest. Dustin had that later on in life. <laughs> He's kind of got like Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> Like a fifty-four inch chest and a thirty-six inch waist, right? <laughs> and, then, and then at the end of his life, because I think he also had some type of uh, stomach or pancreas cancer. Uh, you know, he, he was making movies like Brannigan. You know, where, yeah. like, like, he, like he really couldn't move very well. You know, so he was kind of like another guy like, in a turtleneck <laughs> punching hippies. So. <laughs> All the actor. Do you know that he played Genghis Khan in the movie? Oh uh, yeah. No yeah. shit, I know that. No, oh, it's awful casting. It's one of these really bad. It's like William Bendix as Babe Ruth. Like, I'm gonna throw a baseball now, guys. <laughs> 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 it was, it was, it was like you know, the, the Duke as <laughs> Genghis. Liberati he, is <laughs> Lou Gehrig. <laughs> where, I mean, where, where do I put this bat? <laughs> it's a seat for one. How many? <laughs> Holland is Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> 56, maybe more like 69 game winning streak. Right. <laughs> they just go to the lunch break room where they're making whatever they're making match game 77. <laughs> Being Ray Burn with the giant. <laughs> Remember, he had that big the microphone. The longest, yeah, the most, the most <laughs> Freudian microphone in all of seventies television. I, at one time, at one time, Brett Summers must have been hot. Oh yeah, well Ooh, that was no. uh, that was when they were they were building the Hoovervilles in um, in Central Park. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was that. A... <laughs> Word was Churchill was gonna give those crowds what for. You didn't you didn't wait, Sean, you didn't find something remotely sexy about Brett Summers? Maybe her five head. Uh but, yeah, I don't know. Like I don't I, know. You know, I, I like him a little older, a little wiser, but yeah, she was a little too like she was like scary nana older. Not <laughs> sexy. She looked like she'd be like a yeah, she looked like she'd be like like a, like a suburban like woman in in pantsuits. But if she took it off, I thought she had like good legs. Oh, uh, I don't know. Did she have good stems for a dame, Jeff? Yeah, yes, I yeah. did think she had good stems. <laughs> Fucking hack. She's like, she just seems like she's like bend over to pick something up. She's flashy you know, just scar you for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, she's definitely one of those ones who wasn't big enough up top to wear a bra. Then you would look down, you'd see like two fucking fried eggplants coming out of her shirt. <laughs> She'd be wearing a guy's underwear with a dick hole in it. No, not even, not even. <laughs> granny shit panties. Stain. Yeah, shit stain in the front. Granny panties. Are little, and little, Karen little needs to side. move her business. <laughs> Give it to me hard, Gene. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I, uh, you know, I went, to, I went to some of the best concerts of my entire life. Late 80s, early 90s, New Jersey. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, this, this turned into a hell of a tribute for Toby Keith. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, how do you like me now, huh? Anyway. It started out talking about Toby Keith getting stomach cancer and, and Warren Zevon. And somehow we wound up talking about Brett Summers, you know, and, and would we do her? And her flat <laughs> fucking national geographically Ethiopian. I don't think I don't think she was flat. I'm telling you. You thought she I was no man. Like yeah. in terms of 70s, not for me it was uh for me it was all about Walona. Oh Pass. my god. That, yeah, unbelievable. Man. That's a great call. Walona from Good Times. Good times. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, was Walona was a Thelma. Well, I mean, take your pick. I mean, dealers, dealers. <laughs> I don't know, well, man. Jay, for me, it was uh, me, Walona because Walona was a little more experienced. She was what was Jj Walker's sister's name in that? 
Who, who, what was that character? Thelma. Thelma, Thelma. Thelma was smoking hot. She was. Yes, she, she had an incredible body for this. I am all days. about Esteroli, man. That is that is my, <laughs> that is my Stop it. You are not. Oh, that is my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and Lizzo's beautiful, right? She, she had that Brillo pad yeah. on her head. <laughs> you know, she had a Brillo pad down there too. You know what I'm talking about? No, no, no. Spell it out for us. <laughs> I think I kind of did, Jeff. <laughs> you, you're better okay. innuendo. Anyway, <laughs> uh, and another another. Uh, who, who who would have liked this topic? Um, who passed uh, today was uh, Al Martin, uh, owner of Broadway Comedy Man. and um, uh, Greenwich Village Comedy Clubs, and just just a great guy. He's kind of like the like a dad to anyone who was in comedy. Yeah, yeah great guy, man. You know, I really such a bummer. This day, this day, like the, the third club owner this year to go that I've been like, come on, man. Uh, and yeah, you're right, man. He he gave so many breaks to so many people. He was uh I remember it's like 94, 95. I remember I was emceeing on Sunday nights at New York Comedy Club. And he uh he said, Why don't you just produce your own show? You know, you can make all that money. And I was like, All that money? You mean sixty, possibly eighty dollars? <laughs> and and we'll give you a beer. What? Oh my God! Whispers of Xanadu, <laughs> yeah. and and that was making it. I'm gonna make it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was he was a good dude, man. He he gave me yeah. so much advice when we opened up this club, and you know, I was just going back, uh, looking at some of the texts he sent me, and like for New Year's, he wished me a happy New Year. Asked about the club, wished us success going forward. Uh, just such a good dude. Um, yeah. he's going to be missed. No, Absolutely. yeah, man. You know, baseball season coming up. He was a guy I love talking baseball with, agonizing over the Jets. You know, um, he lived in Staten Island, and when oh, I, was, I didn't know that. Yeah, and so when I, and that's where I live. So when I was going to the city, we would always kind of like make a plan. I'd go by his house. I park my car. We take his uh, truck in to Manhattan. He had a spot. We we parked there. I go do my spots. I go uh, back at the end of the night, do a quick spot at Broadway, and then him and I would go out to grab something to eat and just like talk about comedy and and sports and politics. And it was, it was just like I'm really gonna miss that. Yeah, man. Me too. Yeah, it's crazy to think he's not gonna be around anymore, man. Yeah. What do you think happens to those clubs now? You know, I think they're a machine and they run by themselves anyway at this point. You know what I mean? So, I mean, he lives half the half the year in in Florida, right? So somebody's running. Yeah, that's true. You know, Dina and uh, Melinda were running, but he was really he was the heart and soul of it, and he really, you know, even from Florida, he was watching on his phone and he knew everything that was being taken into that club. Yeah, absolutely. He was a smart businessman. Like I said, gonna be missed anyway. Um, <laughs> let's go back to Brett Summers in Portland. No, um, <laughs> Sean, uh, yes, you know what? I, I think I want you to specify right. now tonight, Jeffrey. <laughs> Sean Lynch, Sean Lynch. Mm-hmm. You know what? I think Sean, Sean Morton, I think we'll get right into music on this one, yeah. Right uh, on. And we'll, we'll talk, you know, because, um, a couple of weeks ago, Sean and I were working together at Tribeca Comedy Lounge and we just started talking about music and 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 just like being around like you know music for years and we we just realized like we were into like a lot of the same things although your band is not a band that Sean Morton or I are big fans of and your big your band is the Pixies right ah uh, yeah huge fan of Pixies yeah yeah, yeah so you know so let me just I'm gonna interject with one thing um so I am not a huge Pixies fan I have also never met you Mr Lynch <laughs> right. so- uh, up until about 12 minutes ago, but you look like a goddamn Pixies fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <makes sense. laughs> you know, the Pixies were one of those bands that you know, they you know, they were just kind of like they reminded me of like a Husker Do. Remember them? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they're, they're just, great. Who's could do is awesome, yeah, yeah. That, that, that music just kind of like I, you know, it just kind of escaped me, you know, I was growing up. Uh, that's like I would say that's a like eighties, nineties type of music, right? 
Yeah. Okay. So I was into Priest and Mania. And then when I started getting to more alternative, I was into the Smiths and we were talking about The Cure and how much we love The Cure. And oh, yeah. we have two, great. two of the best albums back to back with the uh, with, with the uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me and um, Disintegration. Um, yeah. But the Pixies, I mean, the, the things I remember was like, oh, there goes your man, right? Is that was it? Yep. Yeah, that was that was like a big. That was a good song. And yeah. then they had, then they had another one that came out a few years later. That was an instrumental. That was kind of it sounded very much like surf punk. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a good way to describe that. Like surf punk is kind of like their sound. It's like they're, they're, it's a. Uh... That very uh, it, it's got it, it's got like just a little bit of like that like late seventies Sex Pistols kind of like crunch to the guitars, but at the same time it's got that sort of sixties bop to it. Exactly, that's yeah. it. More of a sixties. But in, in fact, Morton, have you ever heard any of these songs? Have you ever heard anything by the Pixies? Oh, I know two Pixies songs. I know here comes here comes your man, like you said, and I know where is my mind. And the only reason why I know where is my mind is because it's a wrestling theme song now. Well, figures. Okay. For for a wrestler. And you know, and everybody's like, well, this is the worst song to come out to. It's not a bad song, but it's not a song that's gonna get you riled up and want to beat the shit out of somebody. You know what no, I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not exactly something Stone Cold would come out to or right, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But if you listen to the like the the sound of the Pixies and take took it up a notch. You could hear Nirvana in there, huge. Oh uh, yeah, huge. You could give her a huge different, a huge influence on that. And, and I would say more Nirvana on uh, the In Utero album than I would Never Mind, where it's more guitar based and it's more of that, you know, that, that grunge, a hard, you know, like like just like a real band sound, not overly produced. Does that make sense? Um, I I can't answer that because I only know two songs. Yeah, I, I mean, you could see the influence that a band like the Pixies would have on other bands. Yeah, but if I if, if you're comparing Nirvana, I would definitely say it sounds more of like their uh, their Bleach album than anything, because that was the more rough, unpolished, you know, kind of uh, independent scene. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you just fall asleep? <laughs> you just fucking fell asleep. <laughs> and, you, and you tell me that I get high too much on this show. <laughs> we we once had a guest on this show, Sean Lynch, that mm. we did we did about an hour and forty five minute interview with him. Believe me, we didn't want it to go that long, but this guy he loved. He was great. He was he was great. He gave us a real education on being a middle band. He was great, but for an hour and forty five minutes straight, this guy smoked. Mm-hmm. You remember which, that? Which one was that? Um, oh, what was the guy? What was the band's name? Something uh, thirty seconds to summer, forty minutes to summer, forty below summer. 40 Below Summer. Yeah, it was a great interview. He was great. The singer, we had the singer in this band on. He was fantastic. Um, but he he would smoke the whole time. But he was pumping out information, right? Oh, yeah. But he was he's a great interview. He's a smart mind, but let me tell you, that boy can he must smoke a quarter ounce a day. <laughs> Sean just Sean Lynch just smoked a quarter ounce. In the, in, in the time we introduced them. <laughs> I definitely smoked a bit today. That is for yeah. sure. Yeah. Do, do you know what, Sean Morton, you may not know this about Sean Lynch as well, okay? But uh, did you ever watch Celebrity Deathmatch? Sure. Yeah. Sean was like the voice on like most of those people. No shit. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was my, that was my, uh, I don't know, I guess my, my big break, I guess, about 20 years your, ago. 20 your claim to fame? That's yeah. Right. What voices, what uh, characters did you wind up doing? I mean, uh, uh, John Rocker for the Braves. Um, trying to think, uh, Richard Hatch, uh, Han- most of the members of Hanson. Like it was, I mean, it was, it was every, every other day it was a different, yeah. That's really cool, man. Yeah. I love, love shit like that. Yeah, that was, was good. It was good. It was good time. It was good while it lasted. 
you know. <laughs> but, um, how do you do it? It only lasted about five years. <laughs> how do you do a John Rocca impression? John Rock is easy, man. You just got it. It's just like a slightly, a little bit of Bill Clinton in there. It's like a little bit of Bill Clinton in there. Then you got to like widen it open. You got to still like give it a little bit of a John Cena sort of baritone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny, man. I got to uh, meet John Rocker. And it's like, this is probably like 20 years after the fact in Atlanta. And uh, he was not pleased. <laughs> Dude, I met him too, and I could not hold back and I could I had to tell him I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate you. I really, hate I like I, I hated the Braves. You know, once he got off the if once he gets off the Braves, that's fine. But I yeah. could not stand him on the fucking Braves. I hate the Braves anyway. Are you from are you from Atlanta? Nah, man. I just I I, I did some stuff over there because of the Walking Dead. So I spent a lot of time there for during the Walking Dead years. And what'd you do with The Walking Dead? Um, I did the voice for our voices for um the Walking Dead video games for that's PlayStation right, that's right, and the uh, Xbox and shit. And whose voice did so, you have to do for that? And that was, yeah, that was, I mean, that was years. I mean, those, those, some of those games took like two, three years to do each. So, <laughs> and they spent it's crazy how much money and time they put into those games. Like, oh my uh, god, well, yeah, but it's um, crazy how much money they, these games make. Did you, did you have to do the voice of Rick? Um, no, nah, they usually, I mean, those voices, the, the main character voices, they usually get the actors. They pay Carl, the Carl, yeah, Carl, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> But then uh, usually they'll they'll hire like guys like me if they have if they have to have new characters or or if they can't afford the actual people they just get, get, they hire somebody like me to do an impression of them. Did you have to do Daryl? Um, no, but I but I've, I've had it done his uh, his brother Merle. Oh, I love Merle. I was like, don't you don't you go trusting them people, little brother. Like, goddamn. <laughs> I, I kind of figured, like, on a video game, like, Daryl would be like, <laughs> it's kind of, it, it got to be inaudible. You could not, yeah, you spoke so uh, low on this show. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It, I mean, there's lots of ways of finding those voices, man. <laughs> <There's>, uh, <laughs> You know, a lot of times they'll just show you the drawings or they'll show you the animatics and you just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> it's like fishing in the dark. Yeah, you keep trying, you keep throwing spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And then eventually the director and everybody's like, ah, that's it, that's the voice. Now, do you, get, do you get any type of royalties or is that just a flat fee? No, the good, I mean, that's the, I think that's the reason they pay so much on the hourly is because uh, we don't get royalties. We don't get any sort of residuals. But because of that, the hourly is phenomenal on these things, you know, like on a, on a on most video games that I do, I'll get like $800 an hour for wow. these voices. Yeah. So Damn. sometimes, you know, you'll be, you'll be working four hours a day, two, three days a week for like a year on, on some of these video games. Cause it's so, they're so dense, you know, all the, um, the coding and all the information and whatnot. Sometimes it can take three to five years just to do one video game. So if you can get a gig on it, it's a it, you know, it's a pretty good way to um, you know make some extra money. You are great with the voices because um, again, a couple of weeks ago at Tribeca, uh, you were doing a bit and you were doing a couple of accents. And, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Dan Lamont and I were were in the back and we were listening, and we're like, that's not like even like a mimic of an accent. That's like he got the accent down. Like, like that's the, that that was like a character you were doing on stage. Well, it's just you know that's that's sort of what I have to do for a living, you know. So I, I mean, uh, I would say I spend as much time doing voices for cartoons and video games that I, as I do doing stand up. So it's uh yeah, I guess it's like it's something that takes like practice and stuff. Yeah, I suppose. Do you it's do fun. You do more like uh, would you do impressions in your in your stand up now? Oh yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I used to do a lot of impressions like in the nineties and stuff. Now it's more I just do impressions of my family or you know my neighbors or stuff like that. But yeah, occasionally I'll throw in like 
the other day, for some reason, I started doing an impression of Dennis Hopper. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, every once in a while. You do impressions of your neighbors. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm, do... I'm, I'm going to start doing that. I'm gonna, okay, here's an impression. Ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do an impression of Paul Schmidt. Mm. Um, hey, 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 Jeff, uh, before you go, you want to hear something? <laughs> hey, 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 Jeff. Uh-huh. Fucking you get got on. Paul Schmidt down cold, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, only other people knew who Paul Schmidt was. Okay, <laughs> I'd, I'd be, I'd be fired. That would be great. But that's a I great impression. Idea. I love the idea of a guy who just is inside jokes. <laughs> <laughs> gets, up, gets up on stage. Hey, how about Tom's mom? Right? More bacon? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I like this one guy in the back howling, yeah. howling. I, here's one of uh, Richie Ferrigno. Um, yeah, <laughs> well, hey, hey Jeff. Anytime you need to borrow a shovel, you know, feel free. Like one dude is just laughing so fucking hard, and he can't believe his luck. <laughs> Bring this material on stage, fucking bomb. But one guy gets it. <laughs> oh, all right, dude. Quick, quick, quick memory. Craziest New York comedy club memory. Craziest, craziest memory in New York comedy club Th- that I have. Yeah. Okay. You may not believe it, but I was bombing on the show, right? And I, I hated no. The, no, no, I hated the, I hated, the, I hated the crowd. And and I lost them doing this joke. I was like, hey, have you ever experienced good <laughs> have you ever experienced uh New York City um a customer service? Like in the same right. day you could experience good uh, customer service and bad customer service. I'll give you an example. Uh, walking over here, I stopped in at a, at a Dunkin' Donuts, and I said, "I'd like a a medium uh, hazelnut, no milk." Girl behind the counter goes, "What happened?" I go, "Nothing happened." I go, "You're not paying attention." See, that's bad customer service. But earlier today, I experienced great customer service. I went to a Boston market, okay, for lunch. Now the girl behind the counter had Down syndrome, all right, but she got the order right. Gave me the right amount of uh, change. I couldn't eat the food because she drooled on it. But other than that, everything was perfect. Like the crowd go. I mean, it's a completely like like like, like woke before it was woke. Okay, crowd. They fucking hate me at that point. But there's one person in the audience laughing. Right. That person was Kurt Vonnegut. <laughs> Right. I think that person may have been Kevin Goatee. Oh, God bless. <laughs> God bless. Yeah, that, that, that's probably my favorite New York Comedy Club moment. Yeah, man. Oh, God. Like, it's so, like, there's so many crazy, like, so many crazy things, man. The, uh, did I, did I, did I ever tell you the, uh, the Kurt Vonnegut story? That was, that was one of the, one, one Al told me. It's nuts. No, I have not heard a Kurt so, Vonnegut. So, that's, a, that's a weird reference to be bringing up too. At, at New York Comedy Club, go on. It's uh, well, he's he's my he's my favorite like he's my favorite humor author. I think he's like, the funniest. So at, one day, Alan and I just you know, throwing stories back and forth, and he says, uh, "Back when uh, New York Comedy Club was on Forty Eighth Street and First Avenue, mm-hmm. he said on Mondays they would have the worst open mic imaginable." <laughs> Like it was like from like you know like three in the afternoon to like five in the afternoon and it was just god awful. But there was this one cat that used to always come in, have a couple of drinks, sit in the back and laugh his ass off at every comic bombing. It, and he came every week, always laughed, always paid a nice tip, left. So one day the guy's leaving and Al stops me and he goes, Hey, let me buy you a drink. He's like, I see that you come in all the time. I see that you, you know, see the issue. So, do you, what is it? Do you, uh, do you, do you like watching comics bomb or what? He goes, no, I'm just kind of fascinated by the whole process and whatnot. Just, I don't know. It's a good way to blow off steam. And uh, eventually, he, after about the tenth time the guy comes, Al asks him, "So, what's your name? What do you do?" He said, "Oh, my name's Kurt Vonnegut. I'm an author." And it was like this was Kurt Vonnegut, like after he'd written like. Breakfast of Champions, Player Piano. I mean, this guy's one of the greatest living American novel novelists ever. And he used to like to go on Mondays and get drunk and watch the open mic. And like, I love that. Like, I love that part of history, man. New York, the New York open mic, man. That has such a. I remember, 
I what this what right be, when Al owned it, and then to when Emilio yeah. uh, took over, and I used to do, run the mic on Wednesdays, and it was a great mic. It was it would be packed. We would get like oh, sometimes over thirty comics. Nice. Um, the mic was supposed to talk, go from five to seven. We would have to start at at four fifteen sometimes, just so we can get everybody on and accommodate people. So one night, you know. Uh, Everyone's going up, and we would get like a lot of black comics who came to the the, the mic, and everybody would had the same take on it. You know what it was? Everybody was against racism. And now I know. Now I listen. I know that's a really controversial take on things, right? I'm against racism. After hearing this about twenty two times, I went up and I said, "You know what? I think I'm for racism." Screen Adam, uh, clip that for me, please. <laughs> Because I want to send it out, to, uh, I want to send it out to the bookers. Because Jeff's Jeff's fucking schedule is way bigger than mine is, so I want to send it out to. All and the- rightfully so. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was just like you know, oh my god! Could somebody, could somebody, please be, be a little edgy here? You know, with with, 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 the, with the mic. You know, you're against racism, really, really. That, that's like screaming into an echo chamber. Right. <laughs> yeah. No one is for racism. You're you're, you're really not. I great. think wrong things are bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what I'm for? I'm for throwing babies in front of trucks. That's what I'm for. I'm if I'm That's, for that. Uh, listen, I've got a pro baby. <laughs> we have an expert. We have a guy in a blue suit behind me here. He's gonna say. You know what else I'm for? I'm, I'm, I want to take puppies and throw them down the incinerator. I'm a, I'm for that. I'm pro throwing puppies down the. Are you are you drinking eggs? What? Are you drinking eggs? Oh no, this is a smoothie. It's like a mango, kiwi, strawberry, and banana. It's like one of those um, health shakes kind of things. Sounds like a fucking bullet train for your colon. <laughs> it uh, definitely does the trick. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely they're, they're about 10 to 15 minutes. I may be running. It's, uh, it's we'll wake you up. Don't worry. We'll wake you up. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I've not stopped running. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Joe and Mitch is having a good time. I'm good. Uh, yeah. That's all that matters. I like when our guests. All right, l- listen. Let's actually talk about the Pixies for a little bit. What dr- what drew you into the what drew you into them? That this is one of your favorite. Bands? Um, I heard I heard the Surfer Rosa album in uh, in eighty eight, and uh, I just I'd never heard anything like it. I would never heard. It was hard. It was it was funny. It was uh, it was kind of punk, but it was also kind of popish. I don't know. I thought it was amazing. And what else were you listening to at the time that doing that? I mean, <laughs> at the time, I was listening to like early Police, like Regatta de Blanc. Uh, Great stuff. Yeah, I was really into the CBGB scene, like the late seventies, sort of uh, Talking Heads, Blondie, that kind of thing. Did I you did go to the club, Sean? Did you go to CBGBs? Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, when I was when I was like a freshman. <laughs> yeah, you went to Sean one. To see yeah. of course, a million times. I have played there once too. Get out of here. Yeah. Back in 90, I think eight, 98, 99, I think it was. Yeah. Did you guys see Hilly Crystal? No. Yeah. I actually applied for a bartending job my freshman year at NYU and he laughed me out of there. <laughs> Do you know the story that when they uh, closed the place, Jeff? So About how they saved the wall and the actual wall is still in John Vivaro sits there now. Did I tell you the story already? No, everyone knows that. Oh, I thought I was special. <laughs> Time to smoke, spe- John. Sp- That's what I'm saying now. I got to catch up to you. Yeah, you're special. Yes. <laughs> it was very strange, though, because I actually went to a concert there. I saw, uh, it was a, I got invited to a guest light at the uh, record release party. And uh, it was very, very surreal to walk in. Because you know, CBGB's is one of those places that everybody knows about. But unless you were there, you didn't realize how just, filthy and disgusting the place really was like that bathroom uh, yeah. like if you ever if you ever took a shit in that bathroom i can i will bet 99.9 percent of the people who ever took a shit in that cbgb's bathroom did not get covid nope <laughs> yeah I, I, and those are the people that now survived the grizzly pear 
<laughs> they were all to yeah, right. Good <laughs> first, like taking over as the next scum bathroom. Yeah, but that was just such a weird vibe, like going from this really dark underground punk, you know, you know, rock metal pop place where all these people broke out, and then you're seeing like, you know, fucking six hundred dollar other jackets inside, yeah, yep. and they have these stupid walls on on rolling carts. They don't even like. They don't even attach them to the wall. They just roll them out and place them against the wall. It was just really awkward. Yeah. Well, I also, just, it, it was weird. It weird still when they started having little like fashion parties there and stuff. They started you know, having these like uh, uh like uh certain uh, fashion lines would have parties at CBGBs, just trying to be like really outrageous. And you cannot bring like high fashion people and like the scumbags with CBGBs together. It doesn't work. Do you guys also remember these clubs? Um, because I used to go to Max's Kansas City. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, right. I think that was on 23rd. And yeah. then I would also go to Midtown to the Peppermint Lounge. No, that's a little before my time. Yeah. Uh, and you you would see like uh, the same bands that would play um fucking cat. <laughs> Hey, buddy. <laughs> everywhere. This is going to be a top five episode for me. This is this is a tough a, fucking question. Is, <laughs> 152 in the can. This is top five already. And we're only at uh, no, one of the one of the big ones I I, I used to go to, uh, we actually recorded uh, with my band a live CD at the Elbow Room. Oh, nice. Uh, and then we used to play, we played the Continental a couple times. The Continental, right? right. Village. Continental. I remember and, that. Uh, that, was the, that was basically the extent. And then we did Lemoore once in Brooklyn. And that was basically. Right. Lemoore used to go to all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I saw Quiet Riot at Lemoore. I saw Twisted Sister. Quiet Riot. Right. Oh, my God. I mean, to see them, I saw the, uh, no, I saw who they see there. Uh, wasn't the Ramones. I saw Quiet Riot. I, I, I don't know. I saw, I saw like so many bands there. It was, you know, we'd go see Zebra and White Tiger and, you know, White Lion. Remember these bands? Oh, yeah. Winger. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about them, right? Oh, okay. yeah. I saw Winger recently. You saw them too, Sean. You saw yeah. Them? Oh, Winger was fantastic. Yeah. We, we saw them. I went with Mark Riccadonna. Uh, of course. We, <laughs> we went to go see John Karabi, Winger, and Tom Kiefer. And, oh, my God. That that was a... I thought Tom Kiefer was great. I think, Sean Morton, you had a different opinion on this show than I did, right? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't that big a fan. You know, like, I was sort of a fan. Like, it was, it, it was like, sort of a, uh, I don't know, like a morbid fascination. <laughs> but... I don't know. I, I, just to hear, like, uh, Cinderella songs. You know, yeah, I can hear something like Night Train, you know, Night Songs was was great, you know, yeah, uh, Nobody's Fool. I thought that they were, they were, he was great. Oh, Sean Moore, yeah. did you, did you like that show? I, I thought Tom Kiefer, who I was dying to see, was horrible. And I thought Winger was, was a thousand times better. Wow, really? I really did. Yeah. You know what? I didn't really appreciate Winger that night. But since, and that, this was back in June, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll put it on the radio and Wing has been on a lot and they're, they're a lot better than I thought they were. Like they had that song, they Miles, were, they were Miles so Away, good. great song. They were so fucking good. So good. But yeah, yeah I, they blew Tom Kiefer. I, I, seven songs in, we left. With Are Tom. you kidding? Yeah, we, we, we were like, we're done. You, you sure Morton has no patience for concerts. No, I don't. Yeah. yeah, but you know when you know. I mean, I know when I when I saw Death Leopard open for um, Journey for Journey, I knew like and I was like halfway in. I was like, oh fuck this, I'm gonna get a beer. Like this is you knew which, just which show firing. was it? This was uh, in L.A. at the Forum. Mm. Because I saw I saw Journey uh, Death Leopard open for Journey as well, mm-hmm. but I saw him at Prudential Center, and I thought yeah. Death Leopard was amazing, and Journey couldn't follow Def Leppard that night. But then I saw them headline on the stadium tour, and I would say about like you know about two qu- uh, quarters into the show, you know two thirds in the show I left because you know they just were just did not have it that night. 
Yeah, that's the thing with Joe Elliott, though. I mean, there, there are some nights he's going to have it, and some nights he's not. I agree. Think, that's, that's really with any kind of singer in that hard rock range, though. I mean, there's pop singers kind of get away with it a little more because I think that they're more, uh, they're less party animals. I would say they, they don't do as much damage to their throats as as rock singers do. But yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of rock bands too where the guys have been completely off one night, and then they're, no. they're great. You know, I saw a few times that was always good. Was was the cure? Never saw. Uh, them. Yeah, the cure's always great, man. Never seen them live. Uh, great band live. I saw them in their heyday. Uh, on on like probably probably one of the better stadium shows I ever saw was that disintegration tour. And the stadiums then really? Oh yeah. Um, you know Sean, who who was the opening acts on that? Um, it sometimes there'd be Echo and the Bunnymen, sometimes no, be it was XTC, um, Love and Rockets, Love and Rockets, no, so. no new tale to tell, right? It was Love and Rockets on that tour. Uh, Sean, this is after, uh, this, this is they had already had uh, Boys Don't Cry and Close oh, yeah. to Me, and they had you know, they had come out Killing with an uh, Arab, yeah. Yeah, they they had the, the you down with um uh just just in heaven, uh, yeah. just like heaven, right? So they come out with an album called Disintegration, which is goes back to being really dark and heavy and dist- and it's so good. Oh, yeah. And they have a song on the album called Prayers for Rain. And when they did that live, it was like that was really, it was it was really like kind of like a goth goth yeah. uh, rock. You know, yeah. real good stuff, man. Uh, that 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 to me was them at their heyday. Yeah. No, I remember in high school, all the all the AP chicks <laughs> all listened to that music. Hmm. They're all into that British. All the all the uh, all the chicks who wore the Doc Martens and the. Uh, That's still a sexy look. Skirts. Oh, it's a great look. They yeah, I used to call it like the Janine Garofalo look. <laughs> like the flat <laughs> skirts. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. I saw Janine Garofalo. I went to uh, see Kids in the Hall. Oh yeah, and Janine Garofalo was there. She she looks good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she 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 was a pretty girl. Sean, do you uh, Morton, Do you know uh, Janine Garofalo? I do know Janine Garofalo. I was I'm actually a big fan of her. I'm actually surprised that she's like you know she, that she does some of the clubs. You know what I mean? I'm surprised that she works. Yeah, I, yeah I she'll do. Okay. She'll do like the the six o'clock show at uh, New York Comedy Club. Yeah, so strange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's very, very strange to me. I, I, like, she's a huge name. She's been on sitcoms and she's been in movies and things like that. But I guess it's to to her. I guess to her credit, she's uh, she doesn't play the 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 you know the rock star kind of thing. You know. No, no, far from it. Far I dig from that. It. I dig that. All right. Well, let me tell you something. This is uh this has been an episode. <laughs> I've had fun actually. I really have. You yeah. guys are great. You guys are great sports. <laughs> well, that's, that's what we do, Sean Lynch. That's, that, that's what we do. We, we, we talk about fucking Brett Summers and we we try and throw some some impression there and we talk about bombing stories. Sean, Sean right. you have some bombing stories, right? Oh my God! So many. I mean, <laughs> so many. I got I got chased across a parking lot once by an audience. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing better than like really pissing off a, an audience every now and then. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> when they just like look at you with disdain. Oh yeah, like, and like, no, I like I, mean, I like playing into that though. Like when I know no matter what they're gonna hate me, I just like playing in like boy. <laughs> I mean, uh, it sure is hot out. <laughs> My black husband and I sure do need to take our pants off. <laughs> and I just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Morton? Funny bomb uh, stories. Bomb story? I, I have more bomb stories than I do killer stories. Because I don't, believe, <laughs> I don't believe, I believe you have to embrace the bomb. Yeah. You only get better from it. I think some people. I hate when people say, "Oh, I, I, I always crush. I always murder." I'm like, "No, you don't," because no one does every single time. I knew. I'll say to you Saturday. 
and I, <laughs> Jeff, you know, I'm very, I'm very hard on myself. I'm very, I'm also kind of humble when it comes to my comedy. Um, I don't always say, I always say, you know, I did okay. The show was great, blah, blah, blah. I was flawless on Saturday. It was a flawless set. I mean, to the point where people were standing when I, when I, and I was middling, people were standing, give me a clap. And like 20 people went to the booker and was like, why isn't this guy closing the show? Why is this other guy on here still? And he walked a bunch of people. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. It was, it Where was, was the show? Uh, New Egypt, New Jersey. Interesting. Wow. I yeah. knew, Sean, you, Morton, you know this guy. Um, I, I could tell you off the air, but he would post every time he did a, a, a show how he didn't just do great. Okay, he he absolutely destroyed where it was standing ovations and they carried him off the stage. How's Joe Anthony doing? <laughs> Joe Anthony wasn't that guy. Oh, okay. No, um, who else? I'm trying to think of who else. I, I think I know who you're talking about, but we'll talk about that later. And I'll give you a hint, former guest. Former guest? Now I threw a monkey wrench into the whole Shit. scenario here. Yeah, you gotta text me that. Um... The fuck are you doing? <laughs> we wanted to see how long you'd be out for. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the fucking best show I've ever done. <laughs> it's a good thing this is not live. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. No. No. Or being Adam, right. do not edit one bit of this show. And you know how we do the multi-camera shoot here where, you know, when Jeff is talking and then it goes to him and then how when I'm talking, it goes to me. Every time Sean Lynch falls asleep, we want to get <laughs> him so that way the YouTubers see this because they're not going to understand on, uh, you know, Spotify and shit like that what the hell is going on. So at least the YouTubers will, will get the explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Lynch, where could people find you? Uh, they can find me on uh, Instagram, uh, Sean Lynch, Sean underscore Lynch underscore comedy at Instagram. And what do you got coming up? Anything good? Um, yeah, the uh, the Napa Valley Comedy Festival, March 21st through the 31st in Napa Valley, California. I'm going to be shooting my next Amazon special at that uh, at that festival. Uh, nice. So. Very cool. That'll be fun. And we got uh, a lot of good comics on there. Uh, Eddie Pepitone, Todd Glass, uh, John Fugelsang, uh, Tony Jackson, uh, Suba Agarwal, a uh, bunch, of, bunch of fun folks. I want to get Fugelsang on this show. That's that's my next guest I'm going to work on. He's a good dude. Oh, he's great. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a friend. <laughs> yeah. I, and I, I realize that you're friends with Tony Jackson. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm actually staying with him. Whenever I'm in New York, I'm actually staying with Tony. He and I used to be roommates before I moved to LA. It's, it's such a small world comedy. Did, did, right? did, did the two of you guys do um, Edinburgh? Yeah, we've done it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing it now for about six years. Are you, the, are you uh, you're out in LA now, Sean? Uh, I'm in Napa now, but I, like, I work out of New York and LA, but I live in Napa. Oh, nice. I'm heading out there Friday. Oh, no. In, in Napa or L.A.? No, L.A. Oh, where are you going to be in L.A.? Um, staying in West Hollywood by the Rainbow. Oh, man. Oh, shit. I wish I was around there, man. There's so many. Uh... Well, uh, hit me hit me on, um, uh, on Instagram, and I'll. Uh, there's, there's a couple of fun places. Uh, I just want to text you if you want to check them out while you're out there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I got my places that I go to all the time, but, like, I'm always looking for something really cool. These are just some weird little, yeah, little fun things that uh, might be. Ever go to the, did you ever go to the Roger Room? No. What's the Roger so Room? The Roger what? Room is on, I think, North Fairfax. And if you walk in, it is basically like the scene from Swingers. It's like oh, a old, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old, old school, dark, dingy, um, okay. red lights hanging off. But the guys, the, 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 the bartenders are called mixologists. And they were oh, like, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good time. no, no, it's actually, it's actually a throwback. It's not like a hipster. You're, you're, you're going to wear, you're going to wear your zoot suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you bet. You can't what have a root, what a root, your keychain with the chain. I had my first Negroni there. Oh, nice. Let me tell you, it was pretty goddamn good. And there's another place that I go to. I don't know if you're aware of it. It's on Hollywood Boulevard. It's called Wacko Soap Plant. No. It's, you don't know that daddy -o. 
It's a, it's a great store that basically has everything pop culture you can ever imagine. Fucking A, man. I'll check that out. Yeah, it's and a you're great check great. out Amoeba, right? Amoeba. They moved, though, since the last time I was there. So it's a lot smaller, but I'm definitely going to Amoeba. Last time I had to ship back all the records that I bought. Of course you did. Well, <laughs> that was a fun trip. That's what Chillin that's what does. Yeah. All right, fellas. All right. Well, th thank you so much. Sorry about sleep so many times. No, uh, no, that, that that that's good. We that happens to us all the time. It's, it's late. It's five fifty three on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas. Yeah, we, Until next time. <laughs> See you Goodbye, later. Sean Lynch. Thank all you right. for doing it, man. All right, yeah. No, thanks for having me. No? <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Lynch. This was a crazy episode. Yeah, it was fun, though. It was a lot of fun. All right. Hey, if, uh, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us on Who's Your Band? Um, we're going to take this week off coming up for the Super Bowl, and then we'll see you after that. So uh, have a great one, and take care, everybody. Subscribe. Later.